so Lindsay brought this up, and she knew that she should not have done this. It was a huge mistake uh, because whenever she says stuff like this off the air, she knows that I'm immediately going to grab it and use it on the air. So what's the name of this guy? Isn't it Tra Travis Barker. Okay, Travis Barker is a rock musician, and what group is he with? Okay, he was with Blink-182. And for those who can't see this, for people who can't see this picture of Travis Barker, He's tattooed from neck on down. I mean, he's, he's, he looks like the illustrated man from Ray Bradbury. He's just got tattoos everywhere. He's got some tattoos on his face. Uh, and he, he, he looks terrible. Um, and so this is a meme of him. Uh, he, you may think that he looks good, Lindsay, yeah. but that's – okay, that's – you're weird. So, <laughs> so you have odd tastes. There are homeless people who look better than this. So, you're, so Travis Barker is standing there, and there's a meme of him, and it says this. It says, quote, I tattooed my body so I couldn't fall back on anything. I purposely did that so I couldn't get a normal job and live a normal life. I did it so I had to play music. This makes you a full-scale, grade-A moron. Okay, this is the equivalent of some guys like, you know what? I desperately want to play soccer. And, I, and I'm, I'm just to make sure I don't have a fallback position, I'm cutting off my arms. I'm just going to cut them off. I don't need them. You know, I need to play soccer. I don't want any job. You know, I may be tempted to j jump, to drop out of this whole soccer thing, and I don't want those arms there. To remind, That'll be a constant reminder that I need to play soccer. It's the only thing I can do. All I have is legs now, right? This, <laughs> this is so stupid. The reason this is stupid is because your tattoos do not guarantee you success in life. They guarantee you won't be successful in one area, but they don't guarantee you will be successful in another area. What made this guy presumably a successful drummer is that he can drum. Not that he has tattoos, right? The idea, oh, I committed myself now. Now I better learn how to drum. If you, are you really that weak-minded? You couldn't teach yourself to drum? Like, you, you didn't realize that you had to learn how to drum to be a drummer until you slathered your body in terrible-looking tattoos, right? And you, as you get older and those start to sag, you're just going to start looking like a graffiti cover bench in South Central L.A. Like, this is a, it's, it's so stupid. But this is what people do. And, and I think writ large, this is actually a bigger message. The bigger message is don't set up obstacles for yourself in the opinion that this makes you more virtuous. There are too many people in American society who do this, right? They, they, m women who get pregnant out of wedlock, and then they go, oh, well, you know, I did it, and, and look how courageous I am. I overcame that to do X. You know what would have been better if you didn't do that? You know what would have been better? If he hadn't gotten the tattoos. Because guess what? You know what would happen if this idiot had not been part of a successful man? If he'd been like the other millions of people who played in a garage band and then fell, and fell apart and, and never made it big? You know what would have happened? I'd be paying for him. Right? He'd be on welfare. He couldn't get a job. That's his whole point. His whole point is that he didn't want to get a normal job and live a normal life. Right, so now your two options are you either make it big as a rock star or I pay for you. And that's not my decision. That's your decision. So you get to take away my money because you're stupid? Okay, so I'm, I'm very glad that this guy made it big and so he's not relying on my money. I'm very happy that he's not relying on my money. But kids, take this as a lesson. Don't be a moron. Don't make irreversible decisions that create obstacles for yourself because, oh, I'm going to make sure that I'm totally committed. I'm totally committed into this career that I've chosen for myself. Right? I've, I have to make sure that I'm committed. Really, just tie like a string around your finger and remind yourself. You, you, really, had to, like, you really had to go and get under the needle for a thousand years. I hate tattoos generally. Lindsay knows this. I mock her for her tattoo on a regular basis. Lindsay has a tattoo on her wrist that says brave. And as I've said, unless you're, it, it, this is the difference between women and men, right? You know who else has a brave tattoo, gang? You know who else has a brave tattoo? The Chewbacca lady. She has a brave tattoo also. Really, watch that tape. She's sitting behind the Chewbacca mask. She raises her arm at one point, and I mailed this to Lindsay. I said, Lindsay, these are the kinds of people. <laughs> She's so brave. She's so brave because true bravery is not fighting in Normandy. True bravery is sitting in a car with a Chewbacca mask and laughing hysterically while you video yourself. That is true bravery, gang. So... Okay, so that that's my little rant against tattoos. But even if you're getting a tattoo, even <laughs> even though even though there are listen, you, you can get a tattoo. That's fine. There are plenty of people who have tattoos. I, you don't have. I don't have to like it. You don't have to care what I think. That's fine. But please, for the love of God, don't do stupid things in your life that prevent you from making decisions later on. Okay, don't pre-commit yourself to a course because it may turn out. What happens if, if, if the guy got tinnitus and decided he couldn't deal with rock music? <laughs> like, what, what happens if you pre-commit yourself to a course? You're 14 years old. I want to be an astronaut. And because I want to be an astronaut, I'm going to ensure that I only, that I only live in this bubble for the next two years. Right? I'm just going to live in this bubble. And then it turns out, well, you know what? The whole astronaut thing didn't work out, but now I'm susceptible to every disease on the planet because I lived in a bubble. Yeah, this is, it's dumb, dumb, dumb stuff. Like, think, think a little. Think like the next step in your life, gang. I, I think that there are a number of young people who got tattoos who are not thinking beyond like the next step because if they thought 40 years down the line, 
particularly women, you'd realize how bad these tattoos are going to look. There's no such thing as a good-looking tattoo on a 60-year-old woman, right? It's, a, it's all fun and games when you're 20 and hot. Okay? It's a totally different thing when you're 70 and you look like you smoke six packs a day and you're sitting there without a larynx and you got a tattoo on your arm. Okay, it looks totally different then. So <laughs> let's just think a little bit down the road, gang. And uh, and that's that's my my message for the day. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to having a nice cordial event where we exchange ideas and don't yell at each other and don't steal notes. By the way, if you choose, <laughs> if you do try to steal the notes, number one, I must warn you, there are a few people who may attempt to prevent you from doing that. And number two, I have hidden copies of my speech under every seat in this room. So you get a speech and you get a speech and you get a speech. Everyone gets a speech. <laughs> Again, thanks to the Yukon administration for allowing this event to go forward. I only wish that their safety protocols extended to allowing members of the general public to show up. I know I got dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of emails from people in the general area who were hoping to get in, were unable to do so. I had heard that by the time of this event, there were another five or 600 people who wanted to come at minimum, uh, and it's unfortunate that the heckler's veto still seems to prevail. Anita Hill spoke here, I guess, in the last couple of weeks, and it was totally open to the public. Something has to be done about a system where a few crazed leftists decide they don't want to hear somebody speak, and therefore people from the outside who pay taxes to universities like this one can't get in. You know, that has to stop. The heckler's view of nonsense where if somebody on the left prevents speech, we all have to make sure that no one can get in from the outside. Uh, that really needs to end, particularly because free speech, I mean, this should be a shining moment for this university, not just because I'm so brilliant and I'm here, but also, <laughs> but also because it's, it's, it's a great thing that universities have people like me, and yes, like the person who's speaking opposite me on this campus to give a variation of ideas. That's a wonderful thing, and that's a, that's a, it should be a shining example for universities around the country. It's just too bad that they won't share that with people in the community who are paying for it. So frankly, I'm always amazed a little bit by the amount of upset that my speech has caused. Apparently, I've heard that I'm a danger to the student body in some way, so much so that the university's associate vice president and chief diversity officer, the most useless title in all of academia, <laughs> sent, a, sent a letter suggesting that students who feel threatened by my presence should reach out to the cultural centers, the dean of students' office, or the university's office of counseling and mental health services. So they actually sent a letter that said, quote, we understand that even the thought of an individual coming to campus with the views that Mr. Shapiro expresses can be concerning and even hurtful. Wow. And that's why we wanted to make you aware as soon as we were informed. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a missile being launched from North Korea. We just have to put the alert system on Twitter. I agree, by the way. If you are so upset by my very presence on this campus, first of all, my guess is you didn't show up. Second of all, if you're that upset that you actually have to go to mental health services, I would just suggest that you probably need to see mental health services about a fair number of other things in your life. <laughs> Speaking of which, of course, the College Democrats are uh, holding an event simultaneously right now, which I'm sure has just the same number of people at it. Uh, this event, I guess, is uh, dedicated to just debunking me. So there's some guy who I'd never heard of until like the last five minutes uh, who apparently runs a website that no one had heard of until he wrote a piece about me. So I, I am excited that I am a one-man stimulus package for academia, that I'm creating an entire cottage industry of useless people who now have found a use, and it's just yelling about things that I say, so that's exciting. I have heard also that this person uh, is a socialist, so I hope that they're getting paid. I hope this guy's getting paid, and maybe he can be drawn into the great market that is the United States and maybe be cured of his foolishness. I do find it sort of amazing, by the way, that the left is so afraid of open conversation that they scheduled an event at the exact same time. And I think that they should totally have their event, and they should have their event yelling at me and all of that. That's great. Um, but I would prefer that they actually come to this event, and then they can ask questions, because when we have the Q&A session, I have one simple rule. If you disagree with me, you raise your hand and you go to the front of the line. I prefer speaking with people with whom I disagree, not only because it makes for great internet fodder, but also because discussions are useful. I've spent my entire life in places like Los Angeles and Boston, places that, where no one agrees with me, literally no one agrees with me, and I have fun conversing about these views. I think it makes me sharper, it makes the person I'm talking to sharper, so everybody will have their shot, right? If you're on the left and you disagree with the stuff I'm about to say, then you'll have your, your, you'll have your opportunity. I just wish the college Democrats had participated in that rather than simply walking out, taking their ball, and going home like small children. And this is an upgrade, by the way, from what Antifa usually does. So I'm glad they're having an event and not trying to disrupt this one. I have a feeling that has to do with a couple of things. One, there's actually security. And two, it's really cold outside, and as a member of my security team told me, they are fair weather protesters. Uh, <laughs> So apparently they, they wrote a letter to the student newspaper saying that uh, I am 
a, a racist and ensconced in white identity politics, which is uh, asinine. I've been one of the loudest critics of the alt-right in America uh, for at least the last couple of years. I was the number one target of the alt-right, according to the Anti-Defamation League. I received almost 8,000 tweets in a six-month period that targeted me in anti-Semitic fashion, largely from the anti-Semitic alt-right. But apparently Antifa is upset, particularly because I, quote, overlook the need for ethnic studies and diversity-related education in the United States. That's fair. I mean, <laughs> They should be angry. If we did away with useless college classes, how could they get easy A's that allow them to have jobs in useless professions at universities like this one? <laughs> now, make no mistake, I'm not saying that people of diverse backgrounds and orientations and races shouldn't be on this campus. They absolutely should. Everybody who's qualified should be on this campus, obviously. What I am suggesting is that if you are judging the quality of a group of people by the color of their skin, this makes you the racist, not me. And if you're looking at a group of people and you say this group of people is better than that group of people simply by dint of the variation in melanin, then you're doing something wrong. There's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with me for suggesting there's something wrong with you if you are judging people simply by their group identity rather than as individuals. Okay.